Howdy folks! So this is going to be a lesson on how to set up a uh, concept image through a camera. I'm also just going to talk about camera settings in general for this video. So hotkeys for camera, control zero. If you don't have a camera active, you'll come into the active camera view. Once your camera is active, just zero will get you in and out of it, as well as just uh, middle mouse clicking out of it will get you, which gets you out. If you want to zoom in and out, uh, mouse wheel, you can also hold shift and middle click if you want to zoom around. Uh, this is extremely helpful for um, setting up con uh, concept views. And then, of course, you have your like 1, 3, 7, etc. on your numpad. That gives you the different like orthographic views. 5, in particular, is the one that enables and disables orthographic view. So that's a very good one to know. So when you set up uh, references in Blender, there's two different ways you can go about it. Um, in Maya, there's kind of just one way where you have your image plane you set as a background. If you want, uh, you can do that. There's two different ways to go about it. If you go reference, it'll create like an actual, um, let me just find the project here. Uh, we are in camera tutorials. There we go, camera demo. So if I click prop one, it'll just load it as a free floating image plane. I tend to choose this option if I'm eyeballing something. If I'm trying to be more exact, which I am like 99% of the time, I typically won't go with this route. Um, I just want to point it out. Another option is, uh, can you please select my menu? I keep doing this. Let's just, and if you want to add a little <coughs> hotkey for yourself, you can just say, uh, well, I have to go back one and select it and then say plus. Or sorry, you have to be inside the window. My bad. You have to be inside the window, hit plus. It'll create a little bookmark for you. <coughs> so if I go that way, um, I think it's based on camera view. So it'll take your camera in mind and like specifically place it based on that. So that's handy, again, if you want to go through the image plane view and if you want to move it back a little bit, just change it to normal and just shift it back, um, which will kind of affect it. Not great. Uh, I don't really like either of those solutions. Uh, I actually recommend entirely doing your concepts, again, unless you're eyeballing and you just want one for reference, through your camera itself. Because um, Blender gives you a lot more options and the benefit of this as well is in a production context, once you've set up everything that you like, um, you already have your camera set up, so then you can render from that view and it's easier to show your work. So just to go into the camera settings, <clears throat> by default, they are set to perspective, uh, but of course you can access your orthographic camera, zoom in and out with the orthographic scale. Uh, if you need to shift, of course, um, same as usual, and then your clipping plane. I talked about that in a previous video. That's very similar to this, except it's specific to your camera. Depth of field, if you want to use it. I am going to cover perspective camera more, but more as I'm setting up, I'm just going to go through the basic camera settings first, and then we'll, we'll loop back around. So honestly, most of these I really don't use. Uh, I just tend to go straight to the background image, add image, and then open. And then we will navigate to, again, here. I have three prop images to set up. I'm just going to go through blocking them as if you were going to pass them off to layout or animation and or just, you know, standard blocking pass that would be good to use. We'll go to that point and then move on. Okay, so one thing to note, every time you bring a camera in, it's going to be stretched. So make sure you hit front or fit first, otherwise it'll throw your proportions out of whack. And if it's only a little bit off, it might not be obvious. So definitely check that first. And then I tend to set to front as well. Um, the nice thing about this is you have this little opacity slider that, yeah, obviously self-explanatory gives you that control. So that's nice. Uh, this resolution, as we talked about before, is under your, uh, what is this called? The output properties menu under format. Uh, when I work from concept views, I like to keep it square. Uh, I just find that easier a lot of the time. It doesn't really matter, kind of whatever you feel like doing. That's just my personal preference. I like doing that. And now we're going to talk about how to line this up. So when you are modeling, especially for production, you want to make sure your model is neutral and the only thing that's moving around is your camera. So first off, we're going to set up some knowns. Uh, so one known I'm going to do is bring in my character because uh, in this case I'm literally just going to do, uh, no, not, sorry, actually here, another little fun add-on that you can have, uh, rigging rigify, if you enable that, little, little tangent here, and then I go to create armature, 
that I can get like a basic basic human ray. Okay, cool. So that's going to be my human reference because uh, I don't I'm obviously not working within a pipeline right now, so I don't have any specific characters I'm trying to build to. But this reference does have a character in it, so I'm just going to pretend these are the same size and go from there. So that's one of my knowns is what is the scale that I need to be working at because. Uh, again, especially if you are in a production setting, you should be getting some sort of like character scale. So what you're going to want to do is set up according to that. So first thing I need to decide is if this is an orthographic or a perspective camera. Now for all the images I've chosen, they are perspective. Um, clear the way to tell is if there is perspective. So orthographic, for example, if I was going to see this as an orthographic view, I'd probably see it more from this like this straight on view and then you would see it like a flattened out version of itself. Um, those are a lot easier to set up, so I'm not really going to go over that, but perspective is obviously where it gets a little bit more, more tricky. So I want my front to be, if I hit one on my keyboard, I want this to be my front view because this is Blender's like natural front f facing state. Uh, and right now this is aiming this way. So I'm going to change my cursor to world origin, change it to 3D cursor, and I want to change my orientation to global, and I'm just going to rotate this around so this is like roughly front facing now this character isn't in the right place anymore it doesn't really matter again it's just for scale so if the character is you want to make sure they're standing in the same spot too because you're using perspective like where your character's feet are planted is going to influence the scale of it so I still have this to be a little too small so if I was an orthographic view, I would be changing that setting to change the scale, but since I'm in perspective, I need to move the camera itself. So I'm just going to pull the camera out a little bit, and I'm not too worried about this box right now. I'm just trying to get it to be roughly the size. Okay, so assuming the character's head is like there, I'll just pull it out a teeny bit more. And yeah, that, that works pretty good. We'll say, we'll say that's, that's on point for scale. And now that I have the scale of the camera, now I can actually change my object. So I'm just going to put this in a new collection. I usually call this like character or reference or something like that. And I can just disable it because I don't really need it anymore. I just needed it for setting up this camera. So I have it facing the right way and I have the scale correct. Uh, another known is where this base of this object is. So it's always going to be at neutral axis, right? So I know the bottom of this. If I change it to uh, here and then I zero that out. Keeping in mind too my cursor is going to be it's set to that mode so just be aware of that. So now I see where I had it in the middle isn't maybe where the middle of the object is. So instead of sliding the object forward because I like where it is in 3D space I'm going to slide this object back. So still in global mode sliding this back and I just want to make sure the base of this cube is going to align with the base of this object. I'm not really paying attention to anything else right now. I just want to focus on like the elements I do know about this object and go from there. So given that, I should probably pull it forward a teeny bit more. And now I can start scaling my object. So another thing I need to decide is how wide is it versus uh, the depth. And if I look at the distance here and the distance here, that looks fairly similar, so I can probably assume this would be one, two, three, four, get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's probably intended to be eight, because nine is sort of a weird number. So instead of working from a cube, I am just going to create a cylinder with eight sides around, because pretty sure that's what's up. And then we're going to repeat this process. So I can get the pivot in the right place, and we're going to, um, we're just going to set this to median, scale up. Okay, so the orientation is probably not completely on, because if I look at my cylinder, it needs to be this way. Okay, so mathematically here, it's probably, if I try 22, it's going to give me 23 probably an in-between number. Okay, so when I'm trying to guess, I'm just going to look for the break of this line and just try and visually... Okay, that's pretty, pretty straight. 
I don't feel there's probably a math number I could do to make this exact, but I'm just gonna eyeball it because this this concept is also not like exact exact, so I'm not I'm not too worried about it. Um, another thing you need to know is the style of your show will more or less tell you this, but like for some shows, for example, if there is a wonk in this architecture and it actually is asymmetrical, that might be an intentional stylistic choice of the show. Or if you know the show is like a little bit simpler, maybe it's lower budget, maybe it's for kids or something like that, it's probably leaning towards a more symmetrical feel. So you kind of need to know the style of your show first too, to kind of make these decisions. But I'm just gonna go based on an assumption that this is like relatively equal and any errors that I see are probably perspective because even keeping this like exactly equal, even if I make this the top part just a teeny bit smaller, it's pretty spot on already without having done too much. So that's a good sign. I'm also not convinced that the camera is quite on point because it's not too bad here, but it overall looks off. So let's just try and see if the rotation could be better. So change it back to 3D cursor, world origin, and it might help to, to enable wireframe so I can see those corners and then we're just going to rotate on the one axis, so I'm lo locking it to X. And I'm going to focus on one known, which is the angle that this is at. So I'm going to assume that this is intended to be a flat surface pointing forward, so I'm going to use that as like my basis for how this should be rotated, knowing that not every side is going to be able to match it. So I'm going to go based on this, and even here I'm reading this could probably be like a little, little bit smaller. Maybe, we'll just raise that up a tiny bit. Cause it does look like there's like extra pieces around the base, which are giving it more width that I don't have on this like core piece. Like you also want to think about which pieces you're trying to match to, because right now, if I imagine this piece in layers, like these pieces wrapping around would be something you build after the basis. I just want to focus this like on what the core base shape of this object is. So I'm looking more just at these lines here and I'm just trying to match that for now, just to get like a good idea of of the size of everything. So assuming that's right, um, let's just keep building, go back to median, just keep making sure this works. Um, this isn't quite, quite matching, I'm losing some volume, but if I looked at the concept, this is also curving, so it isn't unreasonable to assume that maybe there's some bend to it and then it does match a little better if I do that. So I could probably assume that. And then if I bring this up, Honestly, this might even be a little smaller and that's matching pretty good. Bring that up. Honestly, it probably is a little bigger. And then because I scaled universally, just keep in mind that it'll have sunk in this tiny, this uh, the base of this a little bit. So if I just want to hit, change this to vertex snap mode, GZ to get it moving in the Z axis and then control to enable snapping and just click that edge so that I know that this is still flush with itself because when you model in this view, it's kind of hard to see those types of mistakes, but if you're familiar with like what type of motion to expect out of the commands that you're pressing, it'll become a little bit easier. So just keep going. Uh, I know I want to extrude that. It's probably something like this. Maybe this is thinner. And then all right, so that's matching quite well so far. Um, honestly, I'm not going to build like for, for, for layout. Um, I honestly wouldn't even build much further than this. What I might do is take this piece out. So if I extrude along normals, and just push that out a little bit. I just want to get an idea of like the space around this object, like the boundaries of the object space is more what I care about. Like all these little windows and stuff like that don't really matter for layout, but characters could be walking around this object and they would need to know like how far out it comes. So that's why this would matter a little bit more. Um, and honestly, I'm starting to wonder if it should be nine. I'm just thinking, cause it feels smaller here and then it's like a little too big, a little too big. This is a little too big and maybe a little too big. So. Okay, if we give if we if we want to add a piece there just to see, we're gonna add a line. And we're gonna say edit loop tools. 
and we don't have a mirror enabled, so it should work fine. Uh, I would like to apply this to all, and I'm just gonna say space, space that out. And it's created an even space, but it's still like a little bit sunken in. So I'm just gonna relax a little bit, make sure it's set to parallel all. Uh, actually, relax specifically won't work in this context because it's nine. Uh, it likes things to be even. So if that's another thing, if you notice your relax or if like things are just generally behaving a little bit odd with geometry, it could be like your uh, your settings there, so just neutralize those out. Although in this case, I know it's it's not going to work properly because it doesn't like doesn't like that. So I'll just I'll just guess. And actually, this is matching a lot better. Uh, this is lining up more. So and this is lining up a lot more. So yeah, let's just let's assume that it is nine. And that's why you want to keep your models light too at this point because you don't really know what kind of changes you're going to make yet. Uh, and then there's this little leggy here. So we're going to. Uh, I just duplicated it off with Shift D. I right clicked to cancel the move because uh, when you get when you Shift D initially, it'll like select it and you can move it wherever you want. If you left click, you'll commit to that, but you may not want to do that. So right click to disable, and then I can hit P for separate selection, make it a separate object. So now I have an object that's copying the axis of this one. Um, sometimes that's what you want. Sometimes you know it depends, but it makes it, it can make things a little bit easier. And then if you hit E without clicking anything, it just the default is to extrude like along its normal, uh, which in this case is what I want. It's probably something like that. Uh, I could maybe even assume that this is like probably a little rounded, uh, which is fine. And there's like some height here, but again, that's not really going to influence like the exterior dimensions of this object. So I'm not really as concerned with all the little things in here, but I can assume this is going to be on the other side and when you move things around and they just kind of like hook up then you're, you probably have your camera set pretty good uh this might have this is probably a significantly lower though to be honest and i don't think it even comes out as far as that it probably doesn't come out that far yeah that's that's looking closer and then a good thing to do too is just to like look at your model and kind of like see its proportions and then like look at its proportions separately in here. Uh, one thing I'll do too just to see, uh, to help, help myself see is like kind of flip between the two. And if you're not really seeing any really big pops, um, everything, like I'm seeing a bit of a pop right here if I fade between them, but it's pretty subtle and it, honestly it might just have to do with the fact that I need to lift this up a little bit probably. Yeah, that's already matching better. And then I probably just need to like lower this a little bit because it's a little it's a little hard to see in that angle or in that area. But yeah, keep going. I'm not really seeing anything, so that's good. There is definitely a pop happening here, but you want to keep in mind that like the edges of a concept are probably going to be the least accurate, um, just because it's harder to draw perspective in those views. It could be our camera. But in this case, I would actually say it's matching like overall quite well, so I'm not too concerned about it. It might also just be the fact that maybe maybe it's like thicker in the back a little bit. Maybe it's just scaled out a tiny bit, which which I could potentially see because it does line up here and it lines up here. And if it is nine, then it's not a perfect uh, was it octagon anyway. So there that could be that could be a valid discrepancy to have. And then. Let's do a cube. I'm going to do the same thing where I want this to be the bottom. And in this case, I don't want to zero it out because I just moved it forward. I'm just going to zero it out here because I still want it to be offset. And then just kind of pull this out. And now I know this is zeroed, but it's not lining up with this. So now I have a choice to make. Um, I can either have it be offset and just aiming forward or I can angle it. Uh, again, it would depend on the style of the show. I, I doesn't, they don't necessarily, either answer doesn't necessarily seem wrong to me, but I'm probably gonna keep it straight. And I'm also gonna center it on this object. If I just, I think I'm also going to mirror it. Uh, Cause I know it's a little off right now and I would just like to make that the same. So it 
doesn't pop through itself. Okay, so now at least it's like even on both sides and the orientation is straight, in which case I can select this object, click zero here. I know that's centered. And then I'm just gonna assume the width based on, I kind of want it to be in between the two because if it's off by this much and it's off by this much, then I know at least my width is the same. And then it starts to kind of thin down by this point. So it's kind of it's kind of doing this sort of thing. And I can even mirror this guy too. And at least, and if you're not sure too with the proportions, you can always rotate it into place just to make sure it's right. And then it this be smooth off a little bit. But that's pretty good in terms of scale. And yeah, uh, that would be a pretty good block out. Uh, I would maybe just add Probably not as far. Actually, well, it's hard to say. I can't really see it. And if it was sticking out as far, I would be able to see it more, but it's also at the back of the image. So we could assume it's not as accurate, but we'll put it, maybe I'll put it there. This is also sticking out more than I, more than I thought, but that's okay. I just, I'm actually just gonna extrude it. I just wanna check again. Yeah, actually that works, that works better. So that's, that's fine. Um, and I'm just gonna angle this. Since I can't really see it, it's kind of up to the, this is sort of like modeler's discretion, I would say. Um, actually in this case specifically, because uh, I can't tell, and it's kind of up to me, uh, what I would do is just kind of mimic the style that I've seen other places. And I've lost my rotation because I built from this object first. So I'm actually just gonna create another cube and I'm gonna put it in the middle of this by putting my cursor here and then putting the cube here, then at least I know it's in the middle of this. And then I'm going to just eyeball my orientation. Yeah, so it's probably rotated like that. So it's probably minus 30, we'll go, we'll go 35. Uh, uh, minus 34. Okay, yeah, minus 34 and a half then. All right, yeah, that, that lines up pretty good. Okay, so that, that'll be my orientation. And because I'm not sure what the orientation of this is, I could join this to this object and just have it take on its orientation and work from there. But it's such a simple object. Um, I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this real quick. And then just gonna do this kind of thing. Okay, so now that I have this object, snap that. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Okay, now I have this object at least. Um, if I wanted to, what I would probably do from this point is like build it up nicely and then like duplicate it to each one. Um, but in this case, uh, I'm not gonna actually build this entire object. So I'm just gonna do this. And I would say, if you wanna collapse all these modifiers at the same time, just, oh yeah, I should, I'm adding these to my quick select, but to actually access them, you go to object convert, and then you just say mesh, it'll collapse everything at once, you can join, and now you have like a really simple object for layout to use that accurately shows its proportions and size, and uh, it's to scale for character, and it's really light, so that, that they would enjoy using this. I will say though, if you know for a fact, like if this was just like a background prop piece, this would be fine. If there's like an actual scene happening in this area, and like characters are like actively, um, engaging with this object, you would need to build, of course, whatever whatever they are interacting with. Um, this is, again, just kind of assuming it was like background piece in a workshop and you didn't need this. But if you did, then of course you would need to build this uh, so they know how big it is. And I will pause it here and we'll continue with the, another object in the next video.